We're live. It says we're live. We're just going to hang out. We're going to sit here and wait for people to roll in if they want to join in on the fun. We've got a few minutes before we can do that. And while we're doing that, um, we can just kind of talk about my friend and partner in crime here that's going to help me tonight. Her name is Dawn, and she refuses to be seen on camera. <laughs> Hello, all. Yeah, you can hear her maybe in the background. Can you hear her, Pat? <laughs> She's uh, shy. Sure, we'll go with that. Pat's watching, but she does not want to reply. Um, so anyway, uh, Dawn's going to be helping. And uh, what we did was when we set up the career seminar, we actually, hey, there's some thumbs up. Um, when we set up the webinar or the seminar, whatever this thing is, I call it an infomercial, um, Dawn and I decided that it would be a better idea because we thought some people might be kind of bashful about coming on and being seen in public or, you know, in public on Facebook as it is uh, asking questions or considering a career change. And we get that. It's a sensitive idea. So we started taking messages from people. And that went over really well. So we have some great questions. And um, to keep it interesting, Dawn did not tell me the questions. So she's gonna, <laughs> she's giggling. Um, so she's just gonna start throwing stuff at me and uh, we're gonna wing it. But I promised I'd answer every question. She told me there's some good ones. There are, keep you on your toes. It's good. And for, for those of you who don't know, I'm Nancy K. Smith. I'm the manager of the Southwest region for First Weber. So we cover the Southwest Wisconsin corner, and that's a lot of counties. <laughs> but our office is headquartered in Dodgeville, and we have other offices in Spring Green, Mineral Point. We have people in the Platteville area, uh, Prairie du Chien and Boscobel area, and we have one in Richland Center now. And so we're kind of growing and getting around a little bit more. A um, lot of people are interested in real estate. And that's another reason I decided to do this because I get so many calls from people and so many inquiries about it. And a lot of people really think that this would be a great opportunity. Um, Dawn is my assistant manager. And she is, when I say assistant manager, she's really my right hand and my left hand, and some days she's my head too. She has to think for me. You're very good at that, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we make a good team. Make an excellent team. We do. And um, so you'll be seeing more of Dawn because I promised her that I would let her do some videos with me. Thumbs up, everybody. Oh, thumbs up if you wanna see Dawn. Come on, get those thumbs up. I really, really need some encouragement for her. Okay, don't be shy. There's maybe, there's a thumbs oh, up. We got one. All right. <laughs> thank you. Whoever did that, thank you. Um, okay. So what time do we have? It is I don't, 6.30 right on the button. It's 6.30 right on the button. Well, I'm not going to delay. I mean, I think we have to keep moving. Um, well, as I said before, um, I'm the manager, and I've been in real estate for 23 years. I've been managing for a really long time, and I've been with First Weber for almost 20 years now. That's a long time time and it just went by like in a flash. And so um, I've, I've been working with agents and helping develop them and I also have a, I think, a pretty good career myself. And so um, I really like the company. I like what it stands for. I like the leadership and I like the direction that they go. They've always been kind of on that leading edge of the technology changes and just any of the changes that happen, um, which in real estate, there is a lot of change, by the way, so you have to be ready for that. But this company seems to always kind of be ready for it. And I was particularly proud of how First Weber handled the pandemic this year. Um, we immediately went to all virtual meetings, trainings. We upped the ante significantly for our agents, and it's gone over really well. And I have to say, I feel very blessed and lucky to have been a part of that. Um, I want to talk about why people would consider a career in real estate in case you're considering it but don't really know why. I'm going to give you some of the obvious ones. You get to be your own boss, kind of. You got to answer to the broker and me. Um, you, but you do have unlimited income potential, so no glass ceiling. And actually, that's one of the reasons I got into real estate. I have a college degree, and when I moved to this area, uh, many, many years ago, I couldn't get a job or I could use that college degree. And I really felt like I wanted to contribute more to my family's income. And so it is one of the reasons why I got into real estate. 
Oh, we have a question. We have a question already? Yes. Um, somebody has says they live in a small town, and as you can imagine, there's not a lot of homes being sought, bought or sold there. Am I limited to work in the town that I live in, or can I do business in other towns? Okay, I don't know if you can hear her or not, but she said... <laughs> The question is, I live in a small town and there's not a lot of homes that are selling and are, is that person limited to working just in that town? No, you're not. We don't have territories. You're licensed in the state of Wisconsin, but we like you to kind of know the market that you're serving. So whoever asked that question, thank you. Oh, hey, my hair. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I want to talk more, though, about why you'd be in real estate, unlimited income potentials, where we left off, flexible hours, and a great level of job satisfaction. It is very satisfying. You know, it's short term. You're going to get somebody. Um, you figure by the time you get an offer accepted and get them to closing, it's within 30 to 60 days. And, I mean, it is celebration time at the end for, for the most part. So we really like that. You do a lot of varied activities, so you never really have the same day twice. Um, building relationships is important and it's the kind of thing where you can recoup your initial investment in a pretty short time. So that's a great idea too. Um, let's see, day-to-day -day activities. What do we do in a day? You know, a lot of people think we just go to lunch and then we go to the bank to cash a check from a closing. Then we go to happy hour and then we go home and then we start all over the next day. It doesn't really work like that. It doesn't. Let me tell you. Education and training is almost, you know, something that you have to be doing all the time. And um, you really want to be up on your market. So you want to know what's coming on the market, what's sold. And, you know, uh, those stats change on a pretty regular basis. Uh, building relationships, again, networking in the old days is what we'd call it. Uh, preparing a price analysis or a market analysis for people. Um, executing listing presentations and preparing them. Uh, showing properties writing and negotiating offers, navigating contingencies. In other words, when that offer gets accepted, now we have to get somebody to closing and we have to keep track of all those contingencies. And sometimes we do open houses when it's not COVID and uh, creating a business plan. Oh my gosh, we have another question. We do. This one came through text. I have two uh, school age kids that are doing virtual schooling. Everything you just talked about do I have to be in the office to do that, or can I do that at my own home? Okay, someone has two school-age kids at home doing virtual schooling. Who isn't these days? And they want to know, can they work from home, or do they have to be in the office? You can work from home. Um, most of our tools are designed to be, they're all web-based, so you can use them wherever. And we actually do virtual meetings with you, like me and Dawn, uh, Dawn and I proper English, uh, have virtual meetings with you to keep you going. And um, we like to see you from time to time, but especially now with COVID, we're not doing a lot of in-person things either. So we are always avail available for you. Support is really important in our company. And so uh, that's a culture that we've really created. Another one? Yeah. Well, you've mentioned the pandemic <laughs> yes. twice now. Um, it seems that um, selling homes during the pandemic would be very difficult um, with that being said, is this now, is that a good time to become an agent? Okay. So the question is, it seems like during the pandemic, selling homes would be difficult. Yes. So is now a good time to get in? Is that the question? Yes. Is now a good time to be an agent? Yes. Yes. You know why? Because if you have buyers and sellers that just want you to be cautious, you can do all the things, the gloves, the booties, the hand sanitizer, the masks, you know, wiping down everything with a Clorox uh, wipe or virtual showings. There's been a lot of that this year. So yes, it is a very good time to get in. And there are some people who are afraid and don't want to work right now. There are some people who are afraid and don't want to buy or sell right now. And that's fine. And if you don't want to do this right now, you don't have to. Uh, we can talk about the education in a little bit here, but yeah, that's that's actually a very good point. So thanks for bringing that up, whoever did that. Awesome. Any more? Um, nope, just keep going. Keep going. Keep All right, keep going. Uh, how to get started? Well, you have to have a license issued by the state. And you have, and really, Wisconsin is pretty... Uh, 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 for, compared to other states, it's pretty easy. 72 hours of pre-license education. So, <laughs> cool. 
<laughs> okay, 72. She's got another one for me already. Um, uh, there's different course options that you can choose from. Most of those right now, that you, you're not going to do anything live. It's going to be an online class. And we do get discounted rates on courses. And we also provide a free review session before you take your exam that has 100% success rate. I almost said capture rate, 100% <laughs> success rate. And I've actually worked with a lot of agents, new agents this year, who uh, did very well going through all of that. So, yes, do you have another one? Um, yes, this person apologizes, and there's no apology necessary, but she wants to know how much does it cost to become an agent, how soon before I can earn that money back, and how do I get started? You already answered the how to get started. Oh, boy. But what about the other two? Uh I have to think about this now. Uh, the order is, how, how much does it cost to get started? Mm -hmm. And then how soon before I can earn that money back? How soon back? before I can earn that money back? Okay, well, how much does it start? So the classes are going to cost you about $125 to $145, depending on which option you pick. It costs about $100 to take the test. It costs $75 to obtain your license. And then you'll have to sign up for annual dues. And then there's ongoing fees from there that we have an actual printout and layout that we can go through with you one-on-one -on -one because everybody's situation is a little bit different. Did I answer that? You did, but the second part is how soon before I can earn that. Oh, back. hey, if once your license is active, sell, sell, sell. Right, right, right. Okay. Show, show, show. As soon as your license is active, you can start. You don't have to wait until, we do offer some post-licensing training and accountability sessions that I do with you one-on-one. -on -one. You don't need to finish those before you start selling. I like the baptism by fire method a lot. I do have one, and I think this is from your mom. Oh. And it says, when are you going to do something with your hair? Love you. <laughs> my mom wants to know when I'm going to do something with my hair. Hey, mom, next Thursday... And you're going to lose your screen time if you keep trolling me on Facebook, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to call Bill and talk to him about your access to the internet. Love you. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mom. Now you behave. All right. Um, and what does an average agent make in a year? Well, uh, the question is, what does an average agent make in a year? Well, um, that depends. Uh, what is the average agent going to do to prospect and what how busy will the average agent be and how many people do they know and what will they be doing to build their business uh, we have a lot of top producers in, in our office and i can't really i don't want to you know it would be not very nice for me to tell you how much they make but we have uh for our market we have some of the top producers in our market and i think if you followed my event online i talked about at one point um it it's really pretty true about 10% of the agents make about 90% of the money. And if you knew how many homes were being sold in your market, and there's all kinds of statistics available for you to see that, um, that's kind of the goal of you building your business plan. So I don't want to evade the question, but I have some agents that make under $50,000 a year, and they've been doing it for a long time. I have some agents that come in and within a year, they're at fifty dollars to $75,000 a year. It's really going to depend on you. And then it's also going to depend on, you know, are you just doing this? Are you, do, you know, working another job? All those things. Because the time, especially when you're a new agent, the first two to three years, it's time. It's a lot of time. And you will see the payoff, but you've got to put the time in. It's hard work. Not going to lie. We're good for now. But I still love it. We don't have any more questions? All right, right I'll keep now. going. Nope. Um, let's see. Let's talk about pre-license review sessions. We talked about those. Those are free. Um, you take your test. I guess the test is only $65 compared to, uh, according to the information I'm reading that was, oh, by the way, I have to give a shout out to Megan Frazier. Megan, I'm using your presentation. Literally, I'm reading from it right now. Thank you for letting me see a copy of it. You saved me. She's so good. Megan is so good. Um, oh, another one. Okay. Is it about Megan? <laughs> is it from Megan? <laughs> it's not from Megan. Um, someone would like to know, are there sample business plans available for review and ideas? Are there sample business plans available for review and ideas? 
Yes, there are. And I also have my own that are designed specifically for new agents. So I can give you mine and uh, you can also give me yours if you have something that you like better. Um, it, but yes, we do have something to get you started. And I always recommend as a new agent that you have a goal and we make mini goals and then we have long-term goals. And so you're going to talk about three, six and uh, I think three, six and 12 month is the goals I have set up. And then um, we're going along every month when I meet with you on a regular basis, we're literally, we switch to the next month and we keep on going and you're, you're jotting all your stuff down. Um, and, and it works. I'm telling you, business planning is a very important thing to do when you're self-employed. Excellent. Uh, Megan did chime in and said, you're very good. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, I'm not a plagiarizer. I just want you to know that. Okay. Um, yeah, once you're licensed, you're ready to go. And then I think it's really just a matter of knowing that what we provide to you is the systems and the tools and the follow-up and the support that really get you going and uh, keep you going. And it's we're the kind of company that also will sit down and take a look at what have you accomplished? Are you going to the next level? And how can we help you get there? And we're very vested in that. We're very vested in your success. I think uh, we've always said for a long time that at First Weber, you're the agent. You are our customer. And so we want to provide you with things that make it easy for you to go out and do your job and be successful and not have to worry about all the administrative tasks. That's really the benefit of being with First Weber is the systems that we have in place. And so that's something that I'm really proud of. And um, I think it really works for a lot of people. I do have someone says, I currently have a job and the thought of quitting to become a real estate agent is terrifying. Can I do real estate part time? Okay. Somebody has a job. They want to get into real estate, but they're terrified to just do real estate. And they want to know if they can do real estate part time. Okay. So I have a theory about this. I'm going to share it with you. There is no such thing as part time because if you went to, if you came to my house and said, I'm a part-time realtor, this is my, I hear this all the time, my real job uh, is, you know, I work at blah, blah, blah company, whatever, I do blah, 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 whatever. And then, uh, but I'm gonna, I can list your house, you know, I can do all the things. Well, what kind of confidence does that give me if you're telling me that this is not your full-time job? So there's no such thing as full-time and part-time in real estate, full-time attention, is what you have and you it's very easy to do with all the tools that we have you are going to be able to do everything from your smartphone so if you get a break a lunch hour before you walk into the building at work the minute you walk out of the building at night sit in your car whatever you got to do you're available to take care of things because you have it right at your fingertips we have an app that you can use if you have a uh, a tablet or a smartphone you can use it on your app um, we have the tools, I'm telling you, to make it very easy for you to do. So if you need to supplement your income with another job, whether that's a full-time job or a part-time job, besides real estate, yes, you can do it. But you should also realize the value of referrals. So if you have a couple of listings and you're still hanging on to those other jobs, can you really service those people? Should you be referring people? Should you be co-listing or working with another agent until you can do it all on your own. Those are things that we would have to consider. Not, not that I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to help you figure it out. We have another question. Um, okay, if I get that first sale, who provides the support and answers all the questions? Uh, Dawn. <laughs> 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 oh, she, she's laughing though. Uh, Don and Nancy help you through it. Uh, that's our job. You know, I am, I'm a, an agent too. I, I sell, I help buyers and sellers. Um, but I always take time for my agents and Dawn is here Monday through Friday and she's also available, uh, nights and weekends, right? Cause that's yeah. a, that's our job is nights and weekends. So yeah, we're always here to help. But yeah, go do it. Do all the things and we'll be here. And we're cheerleaders. We're the best cheerleaders. We want you to succeed. So I have someone that says, I'm a bit of an introvert, <laughs> but I find the idea of being a realtor very interesting. Can a person like me make a living in real estate? Can an introvert make a living at real estate? Well, I'm doing it. I'm a huge introvert. Um, 
I really, really think it's a great job for an introvert because you're probably more focused on your feelings. Uh, when you're uncomfortable, you know when to get out of something rather than just, you know, diving in and, and kind of maybe without confidence, you're there's there's just greater chance that you're you're going to do something wrong probably. You know what I mean? So it's important for you to kind of understand who you are and what you are and um yes, it doesn't matter what your personality type is, you will be a great realtor as long as you want to be. Someone wants to know what's the worst part of your job? <laughs> the worst part of my job, she said. I don't know. The worst part of my job? The worst part. That's what somebody would like to know. What is the worst part of your job? I love my job. The worst part of my job, uh, okay, well, when I have to give somebody bad news or um, when, <laughs> when an agent is having a bad day and there's nothing I can do about it. And, you know, it just seems so nah, irrelevant for me to say, oh, you know, you can call me and cry on my shoulder. Or you can call Dawn and cry on her shoulder. And, you know, but we're nurturers by nature. So <laughs> we want to fix you and help you. And we know that we can't. You know, that's just, yeah, that's the worst part. This one's for me. Oh. Yeah. What's the best part of your job? Oh, Dawn wants to know the best part of my job. Working with you. Well, that was a good answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brownie points. <laughs> I love my job. I mean, I love so many things about my job and uh, it brings me a lot of joy in my life. And it's been a stressor. I mean, it can be stressful. You're, you're helping people with significant changes in their life. I mean, buying a house or selling a house, making a move is one of the like top stressors in a person's life. And you get to be a part of that. So uh, what you bring to the table, are you level headed and are you, you know, helping them stay grounded or you know are you kind of freaking them out we don't want to do that but you as an agent you have a you know it's a great it's a great honor to be a part of that experience so um someone says they're a very big fan of millie and did she <laughs> ever isn't? go on appointments with you millie did you hear that Oh, Millie, she got a bath today, by the way. Oh, she smells so good right now. <laughs> and she's so soft. Um, but I digress. No, Millie cannot go on appointments because she's an entire show all by herself. <laughs> so I know that there are some people who take their dogs with them, but I'm not one of those people. She goes to daycare. We have a cheer for it. She gets all excited. It's a whole routine. She loves it there. She's so much happier at daycare than she would be on showings. Yeah. Millie loves you, whoever that was. <laughs> that came through a text, so I don't know. Oh, that was a text. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, this is a follow-up. You mentioned stressors. Knowing what you know now about real estate and all the stressors you've had throughout the years, would you do it all over again if you had the chance? Oh, the, so the question is, knowing what I know about real estate and the stressors that I've had, would I do it again if I had the chance? Oh, yeah. In fact, I'd have done it sooner. Um, I've been doing it 23 years. I don't even know how old I was when I started because I'm 29 now. No, I would have been in kindergarten. That can't be right. I don't know. You guys, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. I'm old. Um, but I am going to tell you that uh, I do wish I would have had the confidence to do it sooner. That's really something I never thought that I would ever be in sales. And I think, you know, people have this image of salespeople and <clears throat> it can be kind of negative, you know. Um, they think we're slick or, you know, if you think of some of the names to describe a salesperson, you don't want to be those things, right? And so, um, yeah, I never thought I'd be in sales. and But I don't see real estate as sales. I don't see it that way. I It really is more of a, it's more of a customer service position to me. You know, we're coaches, we guide people, um, you know, just, it's really about them. It's not about us. I actually, I majored in social work and psychology in college. And uh, I think this is the best use of that education <laughs> is being in real estate and being a manager. Because, uh, yeah, I know the things. Any more? Do we have any more questions? We do. I, I want to read this one. 
because it's hard for me, um, uh -oh. is the way it was typed out. Is it real a tour or is it realtor? <laughs> I've heard it both ways, and I'm always worried I'm saying it the wrong way. Well, LOL. LOL. Somebody's making a joke, I think, trying to give me a hard time. <laughs> is it real a tour or is it real tour? You'd be amazed at how many real tours think that they are a realtor. They are not. They are a realtor. Two syllables, not three. Real tour. Phil Dunphy was a real tour on Modern Family. I love Phil. I do too. <laughs> I he's he's my guy. Okay, so here's one. Um, I'm already an agent, and I'm thinking of making a change. Oh. What can First Weber do for me? <laughs> uh, we have somebody who's already an agent uh, and texted in that they're thinking of making a change, and they want to know what can First Weber do for them. Well, I hope you're watching. Because I'm just going to say, call me, we'll sit down, we'll talk about it. Um, and I'm not trying to be evasive again, but I will say this. If you're already a realtor, you already know things, right? So I don't know what you know. And I, you know, together we kind of figure out what do you need? What are you looking for? You know, are we the right fit for you? And I think that that's a really important step. Usually when people come in to First Weber, they're brand new. And I got to say, most people that start with us stick with us. Um, but there are people that go to different companies and some of them come back and some of them don't. Um, there are people who start with other companies and come to us. Um, again, we ha we're we fortunate because of the size of our company and even, this has been for a long time true, we have these systems and we have the built-in support that some companies just, they don't have. They can't afford to do that. So it's kind of, you know, that's the difference for us. So, let's see. What else do we have? Does anybody have any other questions? Um, let's see. I'm going through. I'm going through Megan's presentation. <laughs> Megan. Oh, hey. Here's some things we can talk about. When you start as an agent, um, as I said, you can run out there and start getting those sales. Uh, but the other thing is that we have this other training that we do. So we have something called Startup. Startup is a program that's designed to take you through, um, hey, I'm a new agent. <laughs> what am I doing? To, okay, I know how to write an offer. I know how to do all these things, fill out all the forms. I know how to do all of that stuff. Yeah, you do have to know about the forms when you take your state exam. That's true. But we're going to teach you contingencies and how to fill out the forms and things, things that we have. Um, also, Catapult Align is a um, twice a week program that we offer. They've they're short sessions. I've been fortunate; I got to teach some of them. I like it. Um, and so, Catapult Align is there to help all agents, and it's to talk about things that pertain to the business of real estate. Maybe things that are changing. When we talked about, you know, how COVID was changing. Uh, how how working with buyers and sellers was changing because of COVID, um, those types of things. And just to kind of brush up on skills, we also have a web library with over 500 on-demand courses on things like marketing listings, doing open houses, prospecting, et cetera, et cetera. And there's... Um, there's a lot of things that we offer. Um, we have a... Usually, if it wasn't for COVID, uh, this is about the time that we'd be having our annual retreat, which is a fabulous event. Um, that is um, a statewide event where we all meet up at the Kalahari in, you know, the old days, and we'll be doing it again in the future. Um, and we bring in national speakers. And it's a great, it's a great, great day of networking, fellowship, um, training, education, laughing, we have a lot of fun together. And so uh, what that usually leads to is great referrals. So, you know, we're in the Southwest portion of the state. We get referrals a lot from people in the Milwaukee area or people who are in North, the Northern part of the state. And um, they send us referrals for people that wanna buy land or vacation properties, or maybe they're just moving here. Uh, so that's another opportunity for you to get business. I do have someone that wants to know, do I need a special license to sell commercial properties or businesses that are for sale? That's a good question. Do I need a special license to sell 
what is it? A commercial property or businesses that are for sale. No, you don't. Your uh, real estate license allows you to sell commercial property as well as residential, land, farms, condos. Uh, am I missing something? I think that's, I think that's everything. Businesses. Businesses. Yeah, absolutely. No, you don't need a special license. And we can also help you. Uh, we do have a commercial group that I'm a part of. I, that's an amazing group of people. If you like to sell businesses or you want to get into the commercial real estate thing, that group is really, really good. Uh, very knowledgeable people. And they're very willing to help if you ever have questions. So like I said, support and systems are important to us. You, do you look like you have something else? I do. You do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, this person says, I consider myself a handyman, and I've thought about flipping homes. And I figured the best way to find out about homes coming up for sale would be to get my real estate license. But can I flip homes if I'm a realtor? So he's a handyman, and he wants to... He wants to flip He wants homes. to flip homes, and he wants to be a realtor and a flipper. Yeah, of course. A lot of people who are in real estate investing have their own real estate license. And so um, that's one of the ways that they can control costs a little bit. Some costs. Do you, I know we had a lot of text messages today. Yes, I've got a couple more. You here. still have more, okay, that's good. Um, I have a car that's kind of old. Um, do I need a newer one or even a new fancy one in order to be an agent? Oh, do, what kind of car do you need to be a real estate agent? just as long as it runs and it's clean. Um, a lot of people will look past a lot of things as long as it's clean. Um, I would say that if you, if you, you know, just own the fact that you have a car that isn't brand new. I, for a lot of years, I never bought new cars. I always bought used cars and I kept them for three to seven years. You're going to put some miles on that baby and um, you just want something dependable. Um, it's really up to you. I will say this though, this kind of came up. Um, I'm going to go off on a tangent. So can, can you hold the I questions can, for a minute? I'm going on a tangent. I'm just letting you know. Um, so money is a really big thing. And we talk a lot about, you know, how much will I make and how much does it cost? But we also have to talk about this. When you are self-employed, um, you, if you are, if it's just your income, you need two years of self-employed income to get a mortgage or, you know, I'm sure you can get a car loan without, having that two years of income, but usually they go based on your taxes. And so um, when I go and apply for a loan, I bring in two years of taxes and that's how we do it. Um, there is a, a great real estate coach named Jared James. And Jared James says in the first couple of years, well, he, not just the first couple of years, but he wants us to do it longer. He wants you to live like you're a college student and save like a pro because he actually has, and I can get the numbers for you at some point if you're really interested, but he has a way for you when you get paid, you know, 30% goes for taxes and 30% goes for this. And then you get to live on like, I don't know, 25 or 30%. Can't remember the exact numbers, but he wants you to live like a college student because marketing is so important and tools are so important. Like some of the stuff that he recommends that you do, it costs money you know, to be in this business if you're going to do it at that level. Um, not everybody does it at that level, by the way. But it's great advice, especially in the first few years. Live within your means. And um, living like a college student is a good way to put it. Not that I want you eating ramen every night. I don't want you to do that. But um, I think it's important for you to understand uh, if you've never been self-employed before, that is the nature of employment. And, and financing us. Did I answer the car question? You did answer the okay. car question. <laughs> okay. Um, I have another one. It says, how long does it take a person to get started? Keeping in mind, I would be keeping my existing job during the process. Well, again, uh, not to be evasive, there is no real clear cut answer on that. It's going to depend on you. It really is what you bring to the table. It's your energy. It's your motivation. It's your persistence and your consistency. And, um, you know, it, it really is going to have a lot to do with what you're doing. And, and that's the, again, when I sit with you and say, what are your goals and tell me 
where you want to be. You know, when people come in and they have other jobs, the first thing I say to them is, do you want to keep your job or do you want to quit your job? And a lot of times they want to quit their job. They're trying to phase out of something that they don't like doing. They want to do this, right? So then I say, okay, how much money do you need to make before you quit the other job? Because we have to write that down and you need to be able to look at that and say, hey, I got to this point. Is it time? Can I let go? You know, it's got to be something that you're comfortable with because a lot of times too, you're getting benefits with that job. And so those are important too. Now, First Weber does have access to some benefits for you, but I, you know, it's all stuff that you have to consider. Do you have something else going on over there? I do. Um, this one, let me just make sure I'm reading it correctly here. Okay. okay. Um, I love just looking at homes. Even I even like to go to open houses whenever I see them just to look. If I had a realtor's license, could I just go and look at homes that are for sale, even if I didn't have anyone with me? Okay, so this person loves looking at homes, and they, they like to go to open houses. There's a lot of people who do that, by the way. Um, and they want to know, can they go look at houses just to see them if they're a realtor? Yeah, it's called an agent preview. And you should know. You should know your market. You should know the, the stuff that's on your market for sale. Um, yeah, you can go look at houses, but it's more fun to take a buyer. <laughs> okay, we've come to the end of our questions. What time is it? It is 7.03. 7.03, wow. I could sit here for another half hour and entertain the people that are here, but I don't know if that's what you guys want. Uh, does anybody have any more questions? Or can I just, uh, let's take a poll and you can do it with uh, the like button on this uh, at this point. Um, if I asked you if you were gonna get into real estate, would it be within the next three to six months? Hit that like button right now. Would it be within the next six to 12 months? Hit that like button right now. or more than a year from now. Hit that like button right now. Nobody's hitting the like button. You're making me so sad. We got really lucky though, because we had a lot of like, we had a lot of people uh, contact us with questions. So we were really fortunate for those and, and, and appreciate, there's a like button, hey, thanks. Um, somebody's trying to help me out here. Thank you, my ego needs it. Um, yeah, is there a lot of texts messages that came out throughout the day so thank we did. you for that yes we did yeah. so thanks to everybody who did that and hopefully you know this is going to be it's it's recorded so we get to post it afterwards and use it again and we will so that um because we know that not everybody wants to be seen and we get that um and if i miss any please just reach out yeah um so there's a couple things that we can offer you uh we do have the brochure about what it you know our company or becoming an agent and um, we can send you that it's a it's a PDF file and we want we would need to email it to you so you can send me a message through Facebook and give me your email address and we will email that to you um, and if there's other things that you would want to talk about so how we're doing our meetings right now with people is on zoom so when you message me and say I'd like to know more what I would appreciate is if you would tell me I'm available these days and these times and then what I do is I schedule a zoom meeting and I send you the link to the zoom meeting and then that way we can see each other and we can talk to each other just you and just about your situation so if you are at all interested in doing that just send me a message oh we like you Debbie said I like you too Debbie <laughs> And Cheryl, thank you. Cheryl's a new agent with us. Good information. She knows all this stuff because she's been doing it. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Did I forget? I feel like there's st other stuff we should be talking about. I don't think so. The real estate lifestyle. Did I let them down on that? I mean, the real estate no. lifestyle is, man, we just roll with it from day to day. Take your days off. Write them in your calendar. Don't schedule over them. Uh, it's great benefits uh, as far as the time that you have to spend with your family, homeschooling, 
uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with right now, let's talk about this. Um, when the pandemic started in March for us, right? It started in March and um, the state was kind of shut down. Uh, we were declared an essential business. Uh, we kind of, you know, we're a big part of the economy. And so those of us who wanted to still work could still work. Um, and we've been finding ways to deal with that. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, some people didn't want to work right now, and that's fine. We totally respect that. Some people want to wait to list or, or to buy, and we totally respect that. Um, but for the people who do want to keep going, there are agents who want to keep going as well. I would say um, this is, it's just been a very interesting year. The market is so low on inventory, and there's so many buyers, and the interest rates have been so low, and buyers really want to take advantage of that. Um, I have buyers who... I swear to you, I have buyers who closed at under 3% on conventional mortgages this year, under 3% interest. When I bought my first home, it was 12%. And that was after, you know, people, people thought that was low because they were paying 17 and 18% before I bought my first house. So that's a really big deal. And I will tell you going into the fall, like we are, Things kind of slow down a little bit. A lot of people like to get nestled in for the holidays and they don't want to move. And that's, uh, we usually see that slow down. But then in January and February, things start to pick up a little bit more. Now, what's going to happen this year? I can't tell you. What's going to happen this, this fall and winter? No idea. Because we are told to expect a surge between, what is it, November and January? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, during the holidays. Um, we're told to expect a surge because people will be getting together. So we ask you to be safe and do what makes you comfortable um, in terms of making a decision about your career or buying or selling right now. Oh, I got a note from my assistant manager. <laughs> we do have some great services um, that we can offer. When, I, when I, we talk about support, and services that we offer, I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, we have our own print shop. Um, we have our own marketing department. We have our own help desk, which we call First Weber Google. I call it that. Um, but they'll, and let me tell you, there is no question too silly for them to deal with. And they deal with a lot. And they get a lot from me. And did I just see that we have over 100,000 tickets? Oh, like I, since I, they started? Yeah. 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 It was crazy. They, so they, when you send in a question, they call it a ticket, right? They give it a number. We're at over 100,000 in like, what, three or four years? Mm -hmm. Now imagine how many questions those people get in a day. And they're so polite. They're so kind. They're so nice. They remote dial into your computer and they fix things like they're awesome. I really love them. So tech support is uh, included, right? You don't have to pay for that. And then uh, we have our own attorney on staff. And so our attorney is not there to help your buyers and sellers. He's there to make sure you are doing what you should or if you have a question that you can reach out and contact him and he is great he's really great um and uh of course the leadership I, I mean the leadership is amazing uh they're very transparent you know they share a lot they let us know what's going on we're actually part of berkshire hathaway and berkshire hathaway not only has the real estate division it also has a mortgage division and so we have our own assigned lender who can do pretty amazing things. Um, we also work closely with local lenders, local title companies. We are part of our, we're part owners of a home warranty company. Um, several other uh, brokers are part of that ownership as well. Uh, what else do we have? I'm missing something. We just have a top notch system. I mean, the whole thing is like, it just works. And it's something that's not set it and forget it. It's something that's monitored. You know, these systems are monitored and uh, they change and roll as they go. Oh, the transaction management. So we have an online storage for transactions where lenders, the, tra the transaction participants, so the buyers and the sellers, title companies um, and the agents can access the documents all through this online uh, storage system. And uh, that's pretty cool. Very cool. What else do we do? Virtual, uh, internet leads, 
we get leads. Firstweber.com, heard of that website? I bet you have. Um, we get a lot of leads from that, and so uh, those are those have to be taken care of and assigned to agents. Uh, tech assistance, I see a question. Yes, we have tech assistance. Um, they will help you if they can. Um, they usually can dial in and go uh, and help you with your settings or clean things up or load something or maybe they'll figure out if they can. Usually they can do it. What's wrong with it? Um, and we don't charge extra for that. That's part of the help desk. So, yeah. We are, um, I think I talked earlier about having our own app. Our, we have an agent app. We also have an app for the public so that they can get assistance when they're driving around. It's, um, it's map based, so they can drive around and stuff will pop up for them to look at, and then they connect right to you through that app. Uh, we also have an online portal where you can connect and uh, communicate with your buyers and sellers. And home watch, home watch. yep. So uh, if you are an agent and you have buyers who are looking for a certain type of home or a certain type of property, you can set up a home watch search for them and it will send them alerts when there are changes to the MLS. So if it's a new listing or an open house or something with a price change, they'll get an alert and then um, you can set yourself up to get the same alert so that it cues you to call them. Hey, buyers and sellers, that's how it works. <laughs> we get a cue. Yeah. Signs, smart signs. So when you're uh, going by one of our signs, you can text or call for information. Call directions. And, uh, yep. Dawn's over here with all kinds of ideas. <laughs> I think she's shooting for a raise, people. Okay, here's one. Thumbs up if you think Dawn deserves a raise. Now, mind you, I don't control the raise, okay? Oh, <laughs> there go the raises. Oh, now they're the, now the thumbs are up. <laughs> I may or may not have done What about that. me? Do I deserve a raise? <laughs> hey, there's one. You got two. I got one. Oh, all right. Thank you. Okay for me. <laughs> You're naughty. Yeah. You're so naughty. Okay, well, I think at this point, you know, um, I want to thank everybody for joining us and I hope that this was informative for you. And if you do have questions or you want to reach out, please let me know. We're always here and we are available. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thanks for all the great questions. Yes, thank you for the great questions. Dawn says thank you. And uh, are we going to head out? I think so. We're going to head out. I missed any text. Oh, she Reach really, out. she really, like, she really wants to follow up. So she said if she missed any questions she still wants you to text your number by the way if you got the thing about texting uh your questions to a number that's her number mm -hmm. <laughs> you bug her as much as you want right Absolutely. but you can also you can bug me i'll take it all right all right guys thanks for joining have a great night